Well, tonight we're going to continue our series on country music and country music musicians and their lives and their work. And of all things, what would Elvis Presley be remembered for most of all? Huh? Rock and roll. That's what everybody thinks he is. But you know what? He's also a country music singer. He was country music first. And before that, he was a gospel singer. I want to tell you his history here. Elvis Presley, the king of rock and roll, also ruled in country music. Elvis was raised on country, gospel, and blues music over in the Memphis area. Well, actually, south of Memphis and Tupelo. And uh, anyhow, I could go look down that sidetrack. I won't do it. Uh, Jimmy Rogers was a big influence on Elvis. And of course, you know who Jimmy Rogers is. Elvis uh, brought all of those influences with him when he stepped into the Sun Studio in Memphis to begin his recording his early music. His music had the soul of blues music and the twang of country. And because the term rock and roll had not yet been introduced, Elvis' music was always labeled and known as country. Throughout his life, Elvis loved playing, listening to, and recording country, uh, even after his name became associated with, uh, indelibly with, with rock and roll. Elvis spent much of his early career on tour with great country music stars. He performed at the Grand Ole Opry at the Ryman Auditorium of the Mother Church of Country Music in 1954, and he sang that night the classic country tune, Blue, Blue Moon of Kentucky, and he was a flop <laughs> because, because they loved the traditional sound of country music. And he, he brought that new twist to it, and they weren't used to that, so they didn't invite him back. So <laughs> can you imagine that? So he, instead, he joined the Opry's competitor, which was Louisiana Hayride. Between the Hayride and other tours and performances, Elvis toured and shared the stage with the likes of Johnny Cash, Marty Robbins, Hank Snow, Slim Whitman, and Farron Young. Uh, I, forgot to rem I re forgot to remember to forget his first number one single topped the country music charts in 1955. He sang other country songs like Just Call Me Lonesome, Honky Tonk Angel, It's Midnight, She Thinks I Still Care, Green Green Grass of Home, Susan When She Tried, Help Me Make It Through the Night. Y'all recognize some of these? Yeah. Kentucky Rain. Anybody know that one? Make the World Go Away, Your Cheating Heart, I'm so lonesome I could cry, faded love, you don't know me, release me, funny how time slips away, I can't stop loving you, and Blue Moon of Kentucky. His final number one single, single was Moody Blue, which topped the 1977 country charts. Now Elvis took the world to church with his beautiful, soulful gospel music. Elvis loved sacred music as much as he loved soul and country and rock, maybe even more so. For Elvis, gospel music was the beginning. The first songs he ever sang were gospel songs at church in Tupelo, Mississippi, and he never stopped singing those hymns. In addition to gospel albums, Elvis sprinkled some of his uh, favorite hymns into his rock and roll performances, and he loved to sing old-time spirituals with his friends. The first album of Elvis gospel music in, uh, entitled His Hand and Mind was released in 1960. His second gospel album, probably the best known, was How Great Thou Art. He recorded that over four days in 1966. Now the Jordan Ayers backed him up on that album, but due to a scheduling conflict, the group had to miss part of the recording series. So the Imperials filled in for them so Elvis had the pleasure of recording with two of his favorite gospel quartets on the same album. How Great Thou Art was produced by Felton Jarvis. Elvis kept Felton on as his producer for the rest of his life. Ever generous, Elvis helped pay for a kidney transplant Felton needed in 1972. How Great Thou Art won Elvis the first of his three Grammys. All, all three of Elvis's Grammys were for gospel music. Well, y'all knew that or not. <clears throat> his third and final gospel album, He Touched Me, won a, won a Grammy. His live performance uh, 
of How Great Thou Art, included on his Elvis recorded live on stage in Memphis, won a Grammy in 1975. He earned 14 Grammy nominations, and each of his three wins were for gospel music. Elvis was inducted into the Gospel Music Hall of Fame in 2001. Uh, Elvis and his fe producer, Felton Jarvis, recorded many songs during his several recording sessions in 1970, and they realized that many of the tr tracks were country or had a country flavor. It was out of those sessions that Elvis Country, a complete album full of country songs, was born. They recorded several more country songs that fit the album, and that album was released on January 2, 1971. <clears throat> The album includes tracks such as the singles, I Really Don't Want to Know, and There Goes My Everything, as well as the Willie Nelson's Funny How Time Slips Away. Elvis, <laughs> Elvis's many contributions to country music led to his induction into the Country Music Hall of Fame in 1998. Now, I know what some of you are probably thinking. Elvis Presley uh, was not a saint. Well, I don't know many Christians who are. No, not in the way I think about it. And we think about that as really spiritual, perfect people. That's not true. You know who the saints are? They're sinners that are saved by the grace of God, that God adopted and made part of his family. And we're only holy because we're related to him. The goodness is the Lord's, not ours. Anyhow, I'm going to preach and Excuse me. <laughs> now, Elvis died in August 16, 1977, at the age of 42. Many people think that was because of drugs. and Elvis took prescription drugs. He didn't take recreational drugs. He took that for some of the health issues he had genetically uh, as a young man. And uh, I don't know how many know that. But uh, he was trying to deal with that. And uh, he also had some eating habits. <laughs> like some of us, he ate too much was the kind of stuff that has a lot of cholesterol in it. You like those burgers and all that ice cream and fat stuff like that? Well, he had troubles with that. And, and that all led to a rupture of his abdominal aortic vessel. He died almost instantly. Uh, sad thing. Now, of death, Elvis had told a friend, death just means that you don't have that worn out body. You've got a great new spiritual body like Jesus, and you've left the pain-filled world. Elvis's personal faith was expressed in his extraordinary generosity. He's known for that, and he knew and said who his savior was. He did not like being called the king, and he'd always correct people when they said that. One time when a group of girls stood up in a concert holding a banner that said, Elvis, you're the king, he stopped singing. And he turned to the girls and said, no, honeys, there's only one king, and that is Jesus Christ. That, that, that's a, research, a historian researched that. Those are true lines. <clears throat> 